Hello, Baskervillians. This is Mrs. Koenig. I wanted to share something with you, but I knew we wouldn't have time in class. So I wanted to give this to you today to kind of get you in the mood and help you understand a little bit of the setting of the story of the Hound of the Baskervilles. So isn't that a creepy picture? That is so the Hound of the Baskervilles. Anyway, the first thing I wanted to mention to you is a little bit about the setting. Um, later in the story, the story is going to take place in a place called Baskerville Hall. And what they would do uh, about 100, 200 years ago is they would call big, huge mansions halls. And so when they're talking about Baskerville Hall, they're talking about a huge mansion, kind of like something you would see in this picture. This is a mansion from England about the same era. So you can visualize it when you talk about the Baskerville Hall. It was huge. It was very old. And um, sometimes at night it could be a little spooky looking. Um, but just uh, just an example, this is a, what would be considered a, a hall or a, a big, large mansion home. And then the setting also talks about the moors that are around the hall. The, the Baskerville Hall was set amongst the moors. And what moors are, they're actually moorlands, or they're called moors for short. It's a type of habitat found in upland areas, um, kind of in the temperate grasslands, savannas, and shrublands. Um, parts of England are considered to be moors. They're very um, low-growing vegetation and very acidic soil, so not a lot of trees grow there. Um, there's a lot of old rocks and a lot of really old landforms with the shrubs and bushes and some grass, but otherwise it's pretty flat. And um, this is important to understand because part of the creepiness of the story is the uh, house is located out on these moors and there's a few other houses of, of neighbors that are nearby but in order to get to each of the houses it's a pretty far walk if you're walking or if you're even riding by horse or carriage um, it would take you a little while to get there um, and, and like I said there's not a lot there but there are some paths that people would walk and you know kind of make their way through there's also these old big stones from ancient times a lot of ancient uh, peoples and different cultures would um, live on these moors and set up you know their different uh, civilizations and some of the places have these big monuments and big rocks that were left from thousands of years ago um, and also later in the story they'll talk about some old um, types of indian huts that were made out of stone this dotted along the moor like this so I wanted to, to be able to envision that. But the creepiest thing about the moors is um, often they would become very foggy at night, like right before and right after dust, uh, darkness and uh, dusk. And then in the morning, they would be very creepy. So the same landfall that I just showed you, a lot of times fogs would roll in and this is what it looked like. So it was a very creepy setting, um, perfect for the story. But um, most often it, in the late afternoon and evening, this is what the moor would look like just very foggy, um, you'd be walking and really couldn't see a lot in front of you, which definitely adds to the creepiness of the story and the setting for this particular story. And at night, the moors are extremely dark unless there's a moonlight. There's a moonlight, you may be able to see some things, like in this picture, you would be able to make out silhouettes and you know some things in the ground. But if it was a moonless night though, or the, you know maybe it was just a, a, a you know partly covered moon it got really dark so i want you to keep this in mind as they're talking about different things that are happening because i know the story happens there opens up with something um flashing back to 1600s with the first baskervilles family um and something very horrible happens on the moor and then later in the story what brings someone to sherlock holmes for help is that um the curse of the Baskervilles um, is something happened again to a modern Baskerville, which opens up a case for Sherlock Holmes to try to figure out what what happened to this Baskerville and what is going on. Um, so anyways, I just wanted to give you a little background and I hope you are enjoying the story. If you haven't started yet, hopefully this will get you in the mood.